In this video, I want to talk just a little bit about color depth. Now, throughout this course, we've been, you know, creating these nodes and building up our material, and I haven't really spoken too much on optimization. I've been more concerned over just, you know, creating the material. And once that process is kind of done, I can now start to go back with more of an analytical mindset and take a look at nodes that are going to cause me optimization issues. And so one area that I can see uh, a pretty big issue is in the color depth, especially here for the albedo we've been working on. So for example, if I zoom in here and we started to work with these shape splatter blend color nodes, and you can see here, if I take a look at my information for the node, uh, it says C32F. This means that this is outputting a color 32 float, which is way overkill for this base color data that I want to work with here. I don't need to be working with, you know, 32-bit floating point values here for my color. Also, the end goal is to be able to export maps out of Designer. And if I export these maps, especially my base color, as 32 floating point data, that's going to cause some issues when I try to take that into another program in order to set up a material for rendering. So I want to make sure that I handle this uh, correctly here in Designer before we actually begin to create our final outputs. Um, okay, so let's take a look at where this, uh, where some of this problem is, is starting here. So like I said, I'm mainly concerned here with my extracted map section. This is where I'm creating like my albedo uh, here for my normal and my AO and so on. So here at this stage, um, if we take a look, let's just come up here towards the top where I have my ground. And I can see here that I have this curvature smooth. This is a, a linear 16 a bit. Now, if you don't see this information, uh, if we come up here to the top of the toolbar, we have this little eye button here, this eye icon. If I click this, this is actually lets me disable display flags for each of these nodes. And you can see I have everything dis enabled here. So uh, here I can see my resolution as well as my bit depth. I can see here that this guy is uh, processing at linear 16, and then this data is being passed over here to this blend node. Uh, and then here at this blend node, all of a sudden, we're working here at linear 32-bit floating point. And so you might be thinking, well, you know, where is this coming from? So sometimes you just have to trace your lines back. And so if I look, if I just select this connection line, you can see that it basically kind of thickens or bolds the line. And now I can trace this back. And this is coming here from this shape splatter. And so here with this shape splatter for this height, I can see here, and if I look again, linear 32 float, if I uh, double click this height output, I can also view this in my 2D view. And here as well, I can also see the information of the bit depth. So here we're working with grayscale HDR, 32 bits per channel. Now, if I'm working on creating a very intricate displacement map, yeah, sure, 32 bit float's gonna be pretty good for this. Uh, however, this uh, grayscale information, like I said, is being passed all the way up here to this blend node. Now, a lot of these nodes are going to have inputs to them. And you'll notice that this input, this blend node, has three inputs, a foreground, a background, opacity. And this second input here has this little dark dot or circle in the middle. Every node that has multiple inputs like this, one input is going to have this little dark circle. And what that means is that particular input node is the primary node input which means the data coming in is what's going to be used to determine the resolution and color depth for the particular node. So in our case, on a, back, on a blend node, the background node is considered the primary input. So we know that we have 32-bit data coming into this, and that is why this node now is being processed at 32-bit. To give you a better idea of how this works, let's take a look at a small example. So here I have two uniform colors. You can see this first one, which is blue, is processing at 8 bits per channel. And then here we have this green, which is processing at 32 bits. And now we have this blend mode. So let's take the blue and plug that into the foreground and the green plug that into the background. Now, if we take a look here at the blend and just for argument's sake, let's just set this at 0.5. So we're just doing a 50% blend between these two colors. We can see here, if I double click the node, this blend node is being processed at 32 bits per channel. You also notice here on the inputs, we can see that the background input has the small dark circle, which again indicates that this is the primary input. Now, since the data coming in, this green uniform color is 32 bits per channel, it's feeding into the primary input of the blend node, the blend node will then compute at 32 bits per channel. So with the blend node selected, we can come over here to this output format. Now, if I 
click this button here, we have three different options. Now these options are being cut off here by the screen capture, but the first option is relative to input, the second option is relative to parent, and the third option is absolute. All nodes will default to this relative to input option, which is the first option, which means the output format will be derived relative to the incoming input, which is always going to default to the information coming into the primary input, which again in our case is 32 bits per channel. So if we want to change this, we can. We can come over here and we could set this to be relative to parent. So if I choose the relative to parent option, you can see all of a sudden the color depth changes to 8-bit. The output format is no longer inheriting from the primary input, it's instead inheriting from the parent graph. So if I double click an empty area and I go up to take a look at the base parameters for the parent graph, that's going to be a default 8 bits per channel. So if I come back here to this blend node, I can also switch this to be absolute. This allows me to use this drop down box to choose a specific bit depth. So for example, let's say that I want to do 16 bits per channel. So here we have color 16. The ability to change the output format and how it is inherited between nodes is very powerful. That means that I can mix colors or blend colors that are higher bit depth and then demote that back down to 8 bits per channel downstream. So for example, if we come back here and we look at this curvature smooth, well, that's okay at linear 16 for now while I do some of these calculations. But uh, like I said, this blend node's already coming in here at 32 float, so I don't think I want that. So what I'm gonna do here in this case is with the node selected, I can come over here to my output format, and like I said, we can change this. So here, I'm gonna set this to an absolute value, and I'm gonna switch this to 16 bit. And so you can see now that even though if we come over here to this background, if I double click the background input here in the 2D view, you can see I'm working with this 32 bits per channel coming in. But now the node is actually computing itself and outputting linear 16. So we're saving some time there in terms of our computation. So now that we've set this node up to have a specific bit depth that we want and that we can control, uh, that data is now being passed downstream here. And you can see the blend node here is 16, 16, 16. Now we get here to this color, and now this is at 16 as well. And we'll take care of that in just a moment. So what I'm going to do here at this case is with this node selected, I'm actually just going to make a little comment on this. So instead of a frame, I'm just going to click this comment button. And with the node selected and you click a comment button, it attaches that comment to it. So I can select this, and here I'm just going to say demote to uh, 16L. So there I can just have a quick note to myself knowing that I demoted this to 16-bit uh, linear here. Or actually, let's just switch that to linear 16 just to make sure that it reads uh, you know, like the node information does right above it. All right, so now I know I just, I've just i demoted that node. So here we can come back and we can take a look at this gradient map. Maybe you can see this one here is, is starting to, since we have 16-bit data coming into it, grayscale, and then we colorize it here. Maybe we do want to do this calculation at 16-bit. Uh, that's the beauty of working with these nodes is that you can promote to a higher bit depth to do a more complex color operation and then demote it back down once that blending operation is done. In our case, what we could do is we'll just do this here at 16-bit, and then here for this blend node, uh, I'm going to do the same thing where I'm just going to come into the output form Format, and I'm going to, in this case, switch this to absolute, and I'm going to leave this at 8 bits per channel. So now you can see that here we've done some color conversion from our grayscale here in our gradient map. Same thing that we've done here, but we've done this at a higher bit depth at 16 bits per channel. Once we have this done, then we've demoted this down here to an 8 bit. And if we see any loss of quality here, especially since we're doing this overlay blending mode, we could maybe even leave this at 16-bit if we wanted to, or keep this at uh, relative to input, and, and then change where this color is going to be demoted to 8-bit down the line here. Another technique for that is let's say that we have this blend node and we want to keep this at 16 and, and this blend node at 16. Uh, another thing I could do is I'm just going to select this connection line here, and I'm just going to add a levels. So I'm not actually going to do any processing with it, but I'm just going to use this levels to demote the bit depth. So here with that node selected, I am going to set this to absolute 8 bits per channel. So you know what? I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to let all my color operations, my blending, I'm going to do it all at 16 bit. And then once that's done, I'm going to demote this down to 8 bits per channel here. So here I'll just make a comment for this and we will say that this is demote to 8 bits per channel. Okay. 
So now let's just uh, continue uh, looking at uh, some more of this color depth. Now here's another situation that we have here with our shape splatter blend node. Now if you take a look at this node, we have a lot, uh, in this case if I double click the color I can see, oh well this is coming in 8-bit, this pattern 1 is 16-bit, I, I might want to change that. Um, but this guy, even though this is 8 and 16 for all these inputs here, we can see that the final output is still 32 bits per channel, and we definitely don't want this. Now the reason for this again is because with the shape splatter blend color, you can see here that this splatter data 1 has the little dark circle indicating that this is the primary input. If I double click this, I can then see that, well of course, we have some 32 bits per channel data coming into that. So that means that because the output format, again, it's set to this relative to input, we are inheriting that bit depth information. Now at the recording of this video with the shape splatter blend color, the primary input is going to be this splatter data one. I am going to need to handle the bit depth on the node manually. So again, what I'm gonna do here is just switch this to absolute eight bits per channel. Now you'll notice that this one here, I've switched this to eight bits per channel and it actually worked. It says C8 for color eight. I wanna bring your attention to the version number that I'm using. Again, at the recording of this video, I'm at 2018.3.1. If you are using 2018.3.0, there's a bug with the shape splatter blend color where if you do switch the output format, it actually won't change. It, it's locked absolute to 32-bit float. So if you are using uh, .3.0, you would then need to maybe just insert a levels right after this to demote it, or, or you could just simply just upgrade here to this 3.1 version. But I just wanted to make you aware in case for some reason you are using 3.0 and you're following along and it's not working for you. All right, so uh, like I said, this guy here, even though we made that change, uh, I'm making the change here in this case because I don't want to have to generate this node at 32 bits. Yeah, it's just overkill, and it's also uh, really going to put a damper on my performance level of my graph here. And like I said, because right now the splatter data is the primary input, even though I'm feeding in 8-bit color, this guy's still at 32, so I'm gonna also going to switch this one. I'm going to set this to absolute, just let it default out to 8-bit, and then I'm going to pass 8-bit on as well. Now here, like I said, we also have these 16. Uh, maybe I'll just leave all these like, uh, like this as well for now. Okay, so we've taken care of the ground and the rocks and just kind of moving over. You can see I have my large twigs here. Uh, let's come over to this shape splatter blend color. Again, we're at 32 float. We're gonna come over to our output format, set it to absolute, eight bits per channel, so color eight. We're good there. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing on this last um, shape splatter blend color. So let's go ahead and set this guy here to absolute eight bits per channel. And like I said, I'm looking at this, you know, maybe I don't need these to be 16 bit. This, this could also be overkill. It's just something that you need to take a look at. Uh, maybe switching them to eight bit is, is more than enough information. Just for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna kind of leave them here. The idea here is just to make sure that you're fully aware that you can change this output format uh, on any node and you can manage this color depth on each node to optimize your graph. So in our case, like I said, we're just gonna kinda skip some of those. We're gonna leave this at color eight. The last node that I wanna take a look at here is this base material. So uh, we have everything from our colors also piping here into our base material. And if we take a look at this node, I can see that it's being uh, processed at 32 bits per channel as well. And if I look here at the inputs, the primary input's gonna be my normal map. So if I take a look at my normal map, uh, the normal map is coming in at 32 bits per channel, and that's probably uh, overkill. So let's just go back here through our graph, way over here where we are using the normal node to create our normal map. And I can see here as well, this node is being processed at 32 bits per channel. So what I'm gonna do for this node, uh, just to further optimize this, is I'm going to come over to my output format and I'm gonna switch it to absolute and switch this to 16-bit. So we're going to create our normal map and we're going to demote this here to uh, a 16-bit computation. Okay, so now we can move back over here to our base material and we can see our normal that's coming in here is 16-bit. Uh, our normal that's outputting is 16-bit. Uh, our roughness is 16-bit. The metallic channel is at 16-bit, but we're going to change that in a moment. Let's see, our ambient occlusion and our height is coming in, is outputting here at 16-bit. 
So if we look also at our base color, this is 16-bit as well, which we don't want. So what I'm going to do on this node with it selected, I can come over here and just set this to be absolute 8 bits per channel. So now when we take a look, our base color is 8-bit, which we want. Uh, our metallic is going to be 8-bit. Our normal is going to stay at 16-bit. Now this node uh, internally will keep specific types of data at a certain bit depth. So for example, normal map needs to be at 16 bits per channel, so it's going to keep it there. Uh, our roughness, our grayscale information, we're keeping that at 16 bit. Uh, metallic, which is just basically a binary black-white mask, we're keeping that at 8 bit. Ambient occlusion here is at 8 bit. And then our height, uh, well, our height has been internally demoted down to 16 bit. You can see that we had 32 bit coming in, but height at 16 is going to be uh, pretty good. But if we do need to have a very high bit depth for our height. We can always pipe this data directly to our output at the very end of the process, which we'll cover in our later video. One last thing I want to talk about with this base material, if we take a look at our height data coming in, you can see uh, here we have some of this kind of dark values here. But if we look at our height output from the base material, so I'll double click, it looks like we've lost some information. So one of the things I want to bring your attention to is one of the instance parameters here for the height. There is a height position and a height range. And by default, they're both at 0.5. So if you want to get the maximum range from the incoming height, you just need to set this value to 1. And you can see now the incoming height and the outgoing height from the base material matches. What's nice about this setting is this range gives you a controller that lets you adjust the overall range and position of that height map data. So this could be something that you could expose as a value if you wanted to. But we need to probably keep this at 1 since we've been building up our height information from the very beginning to be a specific value. So at this stage, we've gone through and we've optimized the bit depth for all of our information. And we can see here that that uh, base color is now outputting at 8 bits per channel. And now in the next video, we're going to take a look at working with all this data that we've built up throughout this entire course as a single material. And we're going to do some material layering. Like, for example, we're going to add a dirt layer across the entire surface to fully integrate all of the shapes.